Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration. This is Zach, and up this week I've got an 11A ERF Road Tanker. So this is a pretty cool little model. Um, Lesney Matchbox started making these actually uh, all the way back in 1955. So this would have uh, been while it was still under the MoCo Lesney Partnership. So originally this model uh, was produced in green, um, believe it or not, a green with uh, gold accents on the side tanks and the front grille. Um, that didn't last very long. Uh, the, the green versions of this are exceptionally rare, very difficult to find. Um, but shortly after they, they transitioned away from the green, uh, they started producing them in this yellow uh, which is more common, um, you know, not nearly as common as the later models of the red were. So the red versions uh, typically will also have uh, gold trim on them, gold on the tank uh, on the side, and, and gold on the front grill. Um, the red versions also typically were branded with an SO label, while these yellow versions were not. Um, one common uh, uh, thing with the yellows though uh, there, there's sort of two time periods from the yellow tankers uh, there's some of the earlier versions uh, which were done in a, a more gold yellow darker richer yellow and then there's some later versions that were done in a pale yellow um, this particular one appears to be that darker bolder yellow so I think that this model probably came right after the uh, the the models that were issued in the green um, but before they transitioned to the pale yellow and red models so I think that's kind of where at in the history of, of Matchbox Lesney this model falls um, it is one of the older models in my collection um, being a, a number 11 uh, and part of the Moco Lesney partnership um, this one's definitely very old. So, like I said, my guess is 1955, 1956, somewhere in there is probably when this particular model was produced. So, uh, typically on, on models that I have in my collection that are, are that old and that valuable, um, I would not do a restoration. Uh, fortunately, I have a couple of these models, and that's that's kind of one of my other rules. Um, if I get one, no matter what the shape it's in, if it's the only one I have, I'm going to keep it original. Um, once I have two or three that are original and I have better copies of this that are original, then I'll consider doing a restoration on it. And so for this particular model, it was time to do that. Uh, as you can see, the paint on it is absolutely terrible. Uh, lots of high edge wear, play wear, missing paint in different areas. But the model is complete. Uh, it's not broken. I'm not missing any of the pillars in the cab. All the wheels are there. The axles are very, very rusted, very uh, degraded, but they're all there. Uh, all the wheels are, are on it. Um, and so I, I thought, you know what? This one, it, it's a prime candidate for restoration, uh, especially because it's so important in the history. So to begin, we are going to uh, remove these wheels and axles. Now this is a method you've seen me use on some of these older models before and that is uh, on these crimped axles uh, you'll see that all, all they've done really is they've taken that that round axle piece and applied enough pressure to crimp it down, flatten out one piece of that axle and keep the wheels on. So in order to reverse that and be able to remove the wheels uh, I use just a, a little pair of needle nose pliers and I squeeze across the crimp. So I, I'll squeeze on the sides of that crimped axle. And what I end up with is kind of the, the true uh, idiom, the, the square peg in a round hole. Um, I'm squeezing the widened part of that axle back so that it's narrow enough that I can remove the wheel. Now, this doesn't always work uh, seamlessly. Sometimes the wheels will come right off, no problem. 
um, depending on the amount of rust that's in them, and, and these axles are very, very rusted, uh, that rust can cause the axles to actually expand. And when that axle in there is expanded due to the, the rust and the deterioration, uh, it can make these wheels a really, really tight fit. And so that's what I'm dealing with here. Um, it's not being held up at all by that crimp. Uh, I can rotate that axle freely all the way around. I don't have any problem uh, with the, the crimped end keeping the wheel on. At this point, it's just that rust on the axle that is holding this down. And uh, you can see it's, it's really on there. I bent the tip on my tweezers. So I, I, I think I'm just going to have to get something a, a little more robust to be able to get these all off. So after about uh, 20 minutes of some very gentle persuasion with a set of my uh, little mini screwdrivers, I was able to get most of these wheels and axles off. Um, you can see, hopefully you can see here on the end, um, if I can get it to focus, the uh, cross squeeze on the, the crimped end, um, sort of that squared end. And as I rotate that around, you'll see that the squared end is no bigger round than the round axle. Um, and so the, the next thing I've really got to deal with is some of this rust on these. And uh, I, I'm going to use the method that you've seen me use before. Um, and it works just so darn well. And that is to uh, put all of these in a little plain white vinegar to soak. Um, now, unfortunately, I have uh, made the mistake of putting the wheels and the axles in together. Um, I did a, a Coke truck restoration that I started uh, that method with and um, left it to sit about five or six hours in the vinegar. And I came back and my metal wheels had completely dissolved. So now I, I'm very careful on these older models um, to make sure that I remove all of these wheels. I'm not going to use anything but a little soap and, and water to clean up the, the wheels themselves. Um, before I soak the axles in the, the plain white vinegar. So I've got my uh, little Tupperware here with uh, the vinegar in it. I'm just going to drop those axles in and let them soak overnight. For the cleanup on the wheels, I'm just using a damp paper towel uh, for right now. Um, they, they really are not that dirty. I, I believe I actually uh, used a little soap and water on this uh, back when I first added it to the collection. Uh, I think that's important to do to, to try to keep all the models that you've got in your collection clean. Um, you know, if you're not keeping them in a case or, or under glass or something, that they're going to get dirty and dusty anyway. But I hate putting something that's barn fresh and it's got dirt and, and mud and all sorts of stuff on it um, up in my collection shelf. So this one wasn't too bad to begin with. And uh, there's really... It's not a lot that needs to be done. Um, these original metal wheels really held up pretty pretty good. Um, I've really just tried to take care not to damage them when I was taking them off. So other than a quick uh, cleanup here, we're not going to mess with the wheels uh, anymore. To start the restoration on the casting, uh, I'm going to go back to my all-time favorite, uh, and that is the citrus strip. So I, I keep some of it uh, in a little... Tupperware container here, that way I can reuse it over and over. Um, this stuff works great, but it works slow. So usually I will put it in uh, for a dip like this, and then I'm going to let it sit at least overnight. Uh, the, these older castings, the, uh, the type of paint, the, the original enamel paint that Lesney used, it was some tough stuff. Um, and I found, especially on these older models, that a lot of times it will take, even an overnight soak, it'll take two to three iterations for me to get some of that paint off. Um, and a lot of times, even after a couple of days soaking in the stripper, um, I still have to use a, a mechanical means to get some of that paint off, whether that's a, a wheel on my rotary tool um, or a wire brush or some steel wool. Um, or even just my dental picks and sitting down and picking at some of those remnants that just are stubborn and refuse to come off. So uh, for this first soak, I, I really wasn't expecting much. Uh, as I said, 
the history I have with some of these older models, I know it's going to be tough to get some of that paint off. So uh, this is our first pass. We're going to see where we're at, but more than likely it's going to take a second soak in the stripper. So as I suspected, getting the original enamel paint off this really was a booger uh, and really gave me quite the challenge to do. But uh, as you can see, uh, with a little time, a little patience, um, I, I was able to get most of the original paint off of this. And the few little areas uh, down kind of in some of those cracks, I'm, I'm just not as concerned with them. Um, one thing I did notice when I looked at this casting, you see on the bottom here that little rounded over piece between the cab and the tanker. Uh, that was a change that was made pretty much right at the time period that I had guessed that this was from, right between that transition from the green to the yellow. Um, and so I, I think I was spot on with my, my guess for the age of this. To go back with our yellow color, I'm using a little Tester's Gloss Yellow. Um, now this color uh, I've used in the past on some of these. Um, I used uh, this as a, a base starting point for a lot of the Coca-Cola uh, trucks. Um, I did a, a custom Nestle's van in this color. I absolutely love it. It's such a bright, bold, vibrant yellow. Um, and I, I've made some adjustments to it in the past. Uh, you can add a drop or two of red to get it a little more in that orange perspective. But uh, for, for this model, I think the straight base testers gloss yellow is about as close as I'm going to get to that, that rich original yellow color that this model was in. So uh, this one's easy. Uh, I don't have to mix anything. I don't have to change anything up. I'm using it straight out of the jar and just adding a little thinner so that it, it's flowable through my airbrush. Um, and the rest of it's pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, we're going to start out here, do a, a very light tack coat. Um, I like to turn the pressure down on my airbrush a little bit when I do this first coat just because uh, the higher pressure, the, the little amount of paint that I'm letting come out of this um, I'd end up just blowing it off or I get streaks and runs in it. Um, you know, at this point, a lot of this mix is actually thinner and, uh, that's going to evaporate and go off. And so, uh, if I get my pressure too high, I, I don't give that thinner enough time to evaporate, um, in between applications. And so, uh, I'm working on like a low medium pressure here and just doing the very first light tack coat. For the second coat on this model, I've gone uh, up a little bit on my pressure, uh, gone back to kind of my normal operating uh, pressures on this, and I want to make sure as I work around uh, that I maintain that even coverage. Um, and a really good way to do that is just, again, it's to watch that translucency, watch for the shadows, and, and hit those dark spots. So after three coats of our Tester's Gloss Yellow and a couple coats of Clear, our base casting is finally ready for a reassembly. And this little baby turned out beautiful. I'm so pleased with uh, how rich that color came out. Um, it really shows off all the body lines, all the original details in there. The, uh, the axles was pretty straightforward. I, I soaked them overnight in uh, the, the plain white vinegar and then used a little steel wool, a little quad out steel wool, just to shine those up. Um, like uh, most restorers, uh, I kind of am a little bit anal retentive about uh, reassembly on these. Um, I want to look at each one of my wheels. Uh, most wheels are going to have a good side or a better side, and I always want to make sure that I face those out um, as I put this all back together. Um, 
to return the crimp on the axle, I'm basically using the exact same method in reverse. Um, so I want to go in, you know, I, I was able to squeeze the sides of the crimp back in to narrow it up, uh, square it up so that we could get the wheels off. And I'm doing the same step in reverse uh, to return the crimp to that axle. So you'll see, usually you can tell because uh, you'll have kind of a little rolled up edge um, if you were on the sides when you when you squeezed it to remove it So you want to make sure that you're squeezing back in the original direction of the crimp um, And like I said, that's that's usually not hard to identify if you look real closely at it I also like uh, to make sure that all my axles are going the same direction uh, as far as I know Lesney never mixed and matched which side of a model uh, the axles were finished out on. Uh, most of the time they were all the same, and I'm guessing that was due to speed and efficiency in their assembly lines that uh, when a worker would pick up a model and find the, the first axle that needed crimped, that all of the other axles were on the same side of that model. And whatever machine they used uh, in order to produce that crimp um, could just work right down that side of the model. So uh, again, just firm, even, gentle pressure with, uh, with my needle nose pliers. Um, I have seen some other restorers uh, use some other tools. Uh, if you don't have the hand strength to, to do this with a pair of needle nose, uh, uh, vice grips, or um, I, I've heard them called a couple different things in, in some, uh, some of the other parts of the, the country and the world. So uh, we call them vice grips around here. Um, but a, a pair of vice grips with the, uh, the teeth, filed down uh, inside the grip can work really well. Um, you can actually set the gap on those, which is, is nice. Make sure you don't over crimp your axle uh, or get it too flat. This, uh, this third axle, you'll notice, got a little bend in it. And uh, I, I get, I'm guessing it had that from the beginning um, and through the whole cleanup and everything. I never really noticed it until I was getting ready to put it back together here and saw that kind of curve in the axle. So wanted to fix that up uh, before we stuck it back together. Um, same thing, you know, I'm picking the good side of the wheel to, uh, to face out to start. Um, and this one, I, I've had a, a few fits with it, um, and I don't know if it's just the way that I uh, reversed the crimp on that or what, but this one has been a little bit more challenging uh, than those other axles to get it on, get the wheels on and everything. So. Took a little bit of persuasion on this one, but we was finally able to get it all fit up in there. Uh, and again, we'll sort which is our good side we want to go out and get that reassembled. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, all of these ERF tankers uh, had a metallic um, trim on them, and the red and the green versions used a gold metallic trim on the tanks, the headlights, and the front grille. Um, but all of the yellow versions had silver trim or silver accents on them. So to put that back, um, I'm using the Tester's uh, aluminum look paint. That's been uh, about the closest uh, match that I have found to the uh, silver that was used by the, the Lesney factory. Um, it's got a slight metallic flake in it uh, that, that really helps set it off. Um, and it's just, it's a very, very good match to the original silver that was used by Lesney. Um, on this model, I'm going to put back what was on it when I got it. 
and that was both of the side tanks were uh, were painted up the grill and headlights were painted up and I had to look very very closely because on the top of the tank uh, there's two little caps up there and uh, there was uh, hit or miss and, and there's still some disagreement about um, why or how many of these models had the caps painted but uh, as heavily play worn as this model was I was able to find a few very small pieces of paint around the side edge of the cap on the front of the casting that appeared to be silver so uh, I do believe this model had painted caps a majority of them did not a majority of them it was only the tanks and the front grill um, but because the one that I started with had it I'm going to put those back um, to do this I, I just do it by hand uh, I've got a set of these fine tipped brushes um, and they work pretty well most of the time um, I, I have learned uh, that especially with some of these uh, grill details it takes me both hands so you'll see uh, I'm using one hand to kind of hold the brush and the other hand to kind of steady it against the table um, it is very tedious when I am shooting these videos I, I use a set of magnifying uh, goggles uh, glasses that um, help me see a little bit better um, they're kind of clunky they, they get in the way and sometimes it's um, difficult to get the camera in the right spot where it has a good view and where I can see the casting but uh, this one actually ended up um, pretty pretty good uh, I've been trying out a new tripod uh, that holds my camera a little bit better and uh, gives me a little more space to get in there and actually work on the model so so you can see here um, touching up the headlights on each side and the grill pretty pretty straightforward um, one of the things I'm always careful of particularly with these castings is uh, I don't want to get that paint in the grill too thick uh, otherwise the ERF logo that's in there becomes uh, unreadable and so I, I want to try to maintain as many of those casting details as I can so I really try to, to watch myself and be careful about how thick I get the the paint in the grills or really anywhere where there's a, a lot of detail in the castings um, and of course the last step here you can see we're adding just a little dab of the silver onto these top caps of the ERF 11a tanker truck so here's a little reminder of where we started out with this model um, you know, very heavy playwear, lots of missing paint, but uh, all in all, for a, a model, a casting that's over 65 years old, um, it really it is in remarkable shape. Um, the, the biggest problems were the, the bend, or that cab was kind of bent back uh, against the tank, and obviously the, the paint issues. Um, a lot of heavy playwear and, and loss on the paint, but an otherwise complete model uh, that was a prime candidate for a restoration. So a uh, little reminder where we started with, and here it is today. So this restoration really was a, a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing some of these older models um, just because they're so simple. The, the casting didn't have a ton of details in it. You know, the assembly wasn't complicated. They were very straightforward utilitarian toys, and, and I love that about them. Um, you know, this model cleaned up great. The, the wheels and the axles were a pretty easy, uh, straightforward restoration to do on this. Um, the, the biggest trouble I had, really, was stripping that old enamel paint off because the, the stuff that Lesney used originally, I mean, it was made to last you know they they knew these toys were going to be crashed and played with and tossed in a box and you know it's really a testament to the the quality of uh, their original issuance uh, that it lasted as long as it did and was as hard to take off as it was um, you know really it took a lot of effort to get this model stripped down but 
the rest of it was really just a joy. Um, I couldn't be happier with how this new paint came out. Uh, the, the clear coat, you know, like, like I always do, I like to take it one step further, uh, kind of make it what I think it would have been if uh, Lesney were producing it today. Um, it also, you know, adds one more layer of protection um, and just, you know, helps, in, in my mind, helps make sure that this restoration is going to last for another 65 years and until, you know, probably long after I'm gone and somebody else has taken over uh, as a, a caretaker of my collection. So couldn't be more pleased with how this turned out. Um, really fun little model to do. Uh, and this was a pretty fast restoration. Uh, I did this whole thing in about a day, day and a half, because uh, I didn't didn't have to wait for decals. I didn't have to wait for uh, the paint to cure out as much, just a single color, and I didn't have to do it as thick. So uh, every now and then, I like uh, kind of looping through one of these easier models to do um, because it's just a lot of fun. Kind of uh, reminds me of why I got started doing this. So I hope you've all enjoyed this. If you did, give me a like down below. Uh, you want to keep up with us, click that subscribe button, ding the bell so you get notified when we put out new videos. Um, as always, leave me your comments. I want to know what you think I did right, did wrong, want to see me try to tackle on the channel. Um, I, I really enjoy uh, getting that feedback from you and uh, want to work to make the channel something that everyone really enjoys. So leave me your comments below. Hope you enjoyed this. As always, join us next week for another Vintage Diecast Restoration.